This video is for people that recently start playing uh, poker online just in the last few months with this corona lockdown. The rest of you, skip it. After my recent videos where I played online poker, some sit and goes, I got the questions about playing multiple tables. Basically, people that just started in the last uh, month or two during this corona lockdown, they start playing online for the lack of live action. And uh, for them, apparently, because they're new to online poker, it's a problem to play multiple tables. I show in the videos playing three, four tables, it's easy. Professionals and other young trained guys, they play like 20 or 40 even. Uh, multiple monitors full of little square tables. People, <laughs> older people with eyeglasses, they have even problem seeing the small pictures. So I have a solution and a system for you. Playing online cash games, it's not gonna make you money. It's just gonna cost you. That's number one. Playing uh, tournaments, that's where you can make money. Uh, it's really hard to place into higher prices, but uh, what you get uh, basically for uh, investment, let's say you play $10 tournament, it can be 5,000 guaranteed uh, for prizes. 20% for the first place, that's $1,000. That is 100 times on your buying. So those are really good uh, money odds there, but really hard to win that or even place in the money. Also, those tournaments required many hours of play. Some of them, they can last even 15 hours. If you're not used to that, it's impossible to play it and uh, be focused all, all, all that time. So the solution is play sit and goes. Sit and goes are single table, nine players or six with uh, 10 minutes blind levels. Or if it's turbo, it's five minutes. There's also hypers that are two minutes blinds, but that's really, I don't recommend that. You can play only one table, but the variance is gonna beat you if you do that. So to fight variance, you have to play multiple tables. So if you play four tables, you bust out on one, there's still other three, you may get uh, first place on one, and that win will pay for all four tournaments. So that's how you beat the variance. If you are skillful, you can maybe get uh, out of four tables, you get one first place and one second, one third, and maybe even one more first. So now you're making money. How this system works? For those that are uncomfortable playing multiple tables, this is the perfect way. It's based on timing. Let's look at the blinds first. On the sit and go tab, based on a buy-in price, micro, low, medium, high, or all, you display or filter certain uh, values. The lowest uh, sit and go uh, buy-in is $1.50 or $3, then they have $5, but uh, let's stick with micro. I suggest that's what you start playing. So it costs you $1.65. What is the difference between uh, turbo and uh, regular? Regular has blinds, 10 minutes, 10 minutes blinds. If it's six players, there's only two prizes. With nine players, there are three prizes. Nine max, turbo, five minutes, and uh, three prizes. Blind structure, you can see if you see on price structure, which I don't know why it's there, but you can see blinds starts with uh, 1020 and there is 10% uh, antis. So remember this, this is later, you will see why. Antis are 10%. So this is how the blinds go up every 10 minutes because this is a regular regular six max it's aimed for nine max turbo here is regular nine max three paid price structure blinds are 10 minutes 10 20 15 30 and so on why is this important you have to understand this difference 
for what I call timing. So here's the reason why I say that it's easy to play multiple tables. Watch this example. This is one table. So what's happened when you look at this? I fold. Look at this now. How long does it take them to act? Look at this. Next guy still didn't act. Sometimes I go to bathroom and come back. I go and make sandwich and come back, and they're still on the same hand. Look at this. This is... I didn't change anything in this video. You can see my mouse moving, so I was there at the table when that was happening. Look at how long does it take for one hand. And this is why I say you can play multiple tables. This is regular 9 max. And that's what I suggest you to start with, regular 9 max. Once you are extremely comfortable with this, you can go to turbo. Difference is blinds are five, blind levels are 5 minutes. And here are 10 minutes. You're going to get more hands in those 10 minutes for cheaper price than in Turbo. But basically, it's irrelevant. The least important thing in playing sit and goes is, look, you have to trust me in this, the least important are two cards that you're getting. Your hand is the least important. Why? Let's go one by one. Look at this, this is just a second hand of this, and it's still going on. I'm going to give you later down in uh, description links for some articles that you should study. It will show you how to play sit and goes, and that's also required to study and prepare yourself for the game, because I'm repeating, the least important are these two cards that they're holding. This is just the second hand, still going on, just we saw the flop. Pace is so slow, and that is what I'm talking about timing. First, it's slow, you have enough time to play multiple tables. Now, part of timing is also when are you going to start first table, second table, third, fourth, and so on. Depends how many you want to play today. Well, let me show you what I created. Here's the spreadsheet I created to show you the timing that I'm talking about. You get 2,000 chips. In turbo tournament, lines are five minutes. It takes you about 30 minutes to come to this level where well, blinds are 75.50. If your stack didn't change and you still have 2,000 blinds, that means that you have about 13 big blinds. That is why this level is important. This is where the things start happening. Next level, 100, 200, is mostly when a bunch of people are short stack and everybody start falling off and really rare the game ends up in this level it's really rare so everything is basically happening here after 30 minutes of play what does this mean turbo tournaments usually last about 45 minutes and if you are on this level you should be heads up most of the time how long does it take to reach this moment if you are playing uh, regular, 10 minute blinds, this spreadsheet recalculates everything. And it tells you that uh, regular, usually it's finished in about 75 minutes. So it's hour and 15 minutes you're done in regular, and it's about 45 minutes for uh, about 40 minutes, 45 max for turbo. That's why people play turbo, because you can squeeze more tournaments in the same time frame, in the same amount of minutes that you're playing.
because again it's not about the cards you're getting it's about the volume of tournaments how did i make how did i make this table well what you can do to confirm do something like i did here is the turbo tournament turbo tournament 2000 chips five minute blinds you start with 10 20 and two call it dollars tournament dollars antis which is 10 percent of a big blind I recorded, I played the tournament and recorded, except here, I missed, I fell asleep, so sorry. I, I did this, you can see three colors, three different tournaments, but I didn't do it here. So so you start with 2,000 chips, big blind is 20, which means that you have 100 big blinds. There was nine players. Next level, five minutes later, big blind is 30, till nine players. I had about 1,500 chips, which means I have uh, 50 big blinds. Then I didn't record it here, but you can see in these other two examples. So at this change, with big blind 30, I had 65 big blinds, which, which is like 1,800, uh, 1,950 in chips. Then after another blind level, I had 38. You can see here, that it's totally the same. Look at this. So this is why I'm talking about the timing. I played so many of this that I concluded that uh, the rate when we are losing the players, look at this, first player lost here. There was eight players when this level started. In this case, it was just one level before somebody was careless. And this was one level after that. But this is what I'm telling you. This is where it's finishing at uh, 45 minutes, after 45 minutes play, the whole thing finishes. And in this case, it lasted 55. I, uh, I, was, uh, I took the first place here. And uh, I remember it was a long uh, heads up battle. In these other two examples, I fell out too early, fourth, uh, I mean fifth and uh, sixth. So I fell out of those, didn't make it. Important is that you can see that at this level, when you are here, when the blinds are 75, 150, that is important level, and 100, 200, this is when you have about 10 to 15 big blinds, and that is, important for the way you're going to play that's coming after this if you look at the normal tournament example here's the one that i uh, took first place again here are the those crucial moments about uh, when big blind is about 100 anytime the big blind is 100 or more that is you can see here we had the six players because in this one people start playing uh, reckless or maybe in the same hand two people busted out. I don't remember, don't recall. But basically I had 33 big blinds and the total here is I even uh, calculated this, the total is 150 big blinds. So it looks like I have one fifth, uh, so 20% of all chips with six players left. And that was actually good with, with six players, average is 16, 17%. So I was a little bit above average. With the uh, next level, 150, and this is when, when everything starts happening. Uh, there was five players. I had 25 big blinds out of 120. It's 10 minute blinds. So after 70, 75 minutes, it should be done. Actually, this one lasted an uh, uh, hour and a half and i took first place so this was timing i'm talking about you can confirm by opening any tournament that's running currently this one is third level so they just on third level their blinds are 25 50 nine max let's watch the table so you can open this and just watch one table when they're playing you don't have to play and create a list like this you will see so this is like third level they have one player less that's more like in this case where you can see third level there was nine nine and nine and all these 
examples I have here, these three examples, there were nine players for a long time. And that's why they lasted a little longer. This one especially lasted a little longer because after eight levels, we lost the first player. But like I said, you can watch this, spend some time creating table like this to decide when is the best moment to start attacking. So how do you play sit and goes? Once you find this spot that I'm saying, when everybody is becoming short stack, including you, when you have only maybe, uh, you see, 20 or 15 big blinds in this moment. So if this is the line that we create over $100, at that moment, at this moment, you're going to start playing strategy called push fold. There are multiple charts and discussions on that, and you can Google it. Push fold charts for sit angles. I'll show you. This first five levels, you're going to play super tight. Many people fall in a trap. Oh, big blind is only 20, and I have a uh, 100 of them. That's just going to cost you. You don't play unnecessary. I even don't play more than maybe three hands in this first uh, four level, which is what I play is only pocket aces, kings, queens, ace, king. Once you reach 100 level big blinds, it is push fold. That means basically you have a system because short stack system where based on your position, your range getting wider if your position is closer to the button. And if you have a hand that's in that range, you just go all in. Otherwise, you fold. There's no limping to see the flap. There's no mean raise. This is not poker that you see on TV. Playing sit and calls is a skill. If you're not familiar, study the links that I'm going to leave below. There are also many instructional videos on YouTube, just on YouTube search, playing sit angles. You will see confirmation of this, what I'm telling you. First five levels, you play tight. Not tight, you play super tight. You play only 3% of all hands. And you can play normal. Min raise, re-raise. You can play real poker. When the blinds are over 100, it is push fold all the way to the end. There may be slight change in this strategy when there's four players left. What do you want is to make money. Now, four players, bubble boy. If you're short stack, there's no other way for you than push fold. If you are middle stack, you may want to wait for this low stack guy to fall off. Once there's three of you left, just hit it all the way to the end. Push fold. Let's see what does that mean. Google can help us. Sit and go push fold charts immediately. So search for S and G push fold charts immediately. You can see that there's a bunch of these charts. That is what I'm talking about. People already prepared that. First one is uh, float, floatthetern.com, which is training site that Jonathan Little created. Here, what we see immediately, immediately based on the position, small small blind, I think this is for small blind and big blind combined. Button, cutoff, hijack, low jack, based on number of players. And it says 12%, 12 12 and a half antis, 10% antis, no antis. There are some sit and goes that there are no antis at all. This one, that's why I was stressing before, has 10% antis. So you're going to click on this, the chart changed. You cannot memorize this, but you can print it out. And lucky for you, Jonathan Little made even push fold phone app available for iPhone and Android. So you can download this app and use this as a guidance. You're playing at home. You can even have this printed and paste it next to your laptop there. So you can look at it. What you should do on floatthetern.com, go to tools, and here the first link is a pushfold app, so you can download it. Pushfold calculator, pushfold quiz, you should study and test yourself. 
if you go to push fold app it says here click to view instructions when you click there scroll down here are some explanations and it says click here to see the video this is the video Jonathan created that explains how this system works and how it should be used and how the range is changed based on uh, the position. I don't want to waste time here reviewing this. Also, I don't want to talk about the charts more than necessary because you have to do the work. You have to study and that is number one you cannot play what i told you with if, if you're not really prepared here's the table we start watching now with blinds 40 80 and that's level four and they have two four six players that is same thing that was happening in this one where i played six players this is the moment when everybody's becoming short stack. So you can see if we convert by clicking on a dollar amount, if we click uh, convert that to big blinds, you can see there's 35, 45, 20, 70, 20, 29. So we did next level, next level. These guys that have 20 big blinds, they have now 1600, uh, chips next level with 120 they go gonna be down to 12 big blinds and this is what i said once you are over 100 they're becoming almost everybody low stack and time to play push fold so this is your critical that over 100 here we are so these guys had 12 20 now they have 12 and 13 19 32 21 and this is what you can see here when I played this uh, yesterday at this moment I had 33 big blinds this is how you confirm that this timing over 100 this one is now 30 his short stack he's gonna start going all in why do you go all in with 13 big blinds your goal is probably even not to double up your goal is to steal the blinds and antis if you do that three, four times during the round, you increase your stack significantly. What happens if you go all in and uh, it doesn't work? Well, let me show you. I just played this uh, about half hour ago before I started this video. And uh, here's the hand that I played just like 20 minutes ago. We started the hand. I'm in a small blind, I pocket queens. You can see that under the gun calls 600 blind. This guy goes all in, I go all in, and these two call. There are four of us all in. Pocket queens, is there an ace? No, king high, five, seven, pocket eights, five made the straight. Five, seven made the straight. This guy gets a side butt. Pocket queens, I'm out, five, seven beat me. Don't you think that's ridiculous? But that happens. These people that play the bad hands, King 3 and 5, 7, are your customer for the future. In a long run, you are going to beat them. Don't worry about them. Here's some other hands from uh, this tournament that I played yesterday. These are a couple of hands I want, I'm going to show you. In this hand, I'm in a big blind, pocket jacks, and I'm already planning, you see, it's the full table. I'm already planning, uh, it just probably started recently. Blinds are 25.50, so. King on a flop, kind of scares me, I check. He bets, I go all in, just decided that it doesn't make sense for him to bet. Turns out he folded, but the guy on my left called me with a flush draw and I double up. Here's the next hand. I'm in a small blind and uh, blinds are 40-80. We lost two players in previous round and uh, 
there was a race 160 usually i would fold but there was something that makes me suspicious about this uh, player so i decided i said it's not that much i have enough chips 4100 and uh, decided to call another player short stack went all in at that moment razor went all in now 1800 is too much to call with pocket fives and i decided to fold flop is the five ah, come on basically i would take both of them out but like i said in the beginning before blinds are 100 or more you have to play really conservative game at this moment it didn't make sense to call with pocket flies there was raise re-raise all in all in by the original razor it's obvious big hand so fold was appropriate except i would get lucky well we came to down to three player and the blinds were 100 200 i was in a small blind got a good hand player over there raised i went all in and ace was good here i'm now chip leader two hands later blind still 100 200 i get pocket queens on a button i raise he goes all in again i call he had king jack he was in a push fold mode i'm heads up he's the final piece of this puzzle so we said if you are playing a five minutes blind or 10 minute blind it doesn't matter the blind structure is the same everything starts happening here when the blinds go over 100 this is when you start push fold system so this is after 25 minutes of playing so the first table has these blinds and in that moment you can start the second one when that one is is becoming critical and you have to pay attention to it you start the third table and same thing for that one later start fourth table somewhere here first table will end these black squares represent the end on this level or level before that's why i'm not sure depends on the speed of that table but right now you can see that you never actually have four tables open at once you will have for this period of time two tables and maybe one or two levels you'll have three tables and the same thing repeats here once this first table is done you may have for a couple levels two tables then you start the third table so basically you never have more than three tables open very rare it's going to be four if we are talking about uh, normal 10 minute blinds it's the same it's just that uh, time play time expands so after 40 minutes you will open second table everything else stays the same after 80 minutes you would open third table 
And that is why we prefer to play five minute blinds, turbo tables. I suggest you start for a week playing nine max regular and then after that switch to turbo five minutes and apply this system. This is just approximation of what's going on, but I told you, you can prove that by what observing some. Blinds are 100, 200, and this is regular. So you can make your own chart like this and try to make sense what's going on, but I'm telling you, there's the pattern and the system, and everything is function of time. Number of players that are dropping off is function of time. You can predict when there's gonna be only four or five left. Let's see the table we're following. Right now, they are at uh, 100, 200 blinds. 100, 200. And they are suddenly heads up. So like I said, it's gonna finish there or at this level, 150, 300. Oh, they're already all in, they're done in the first hand. So this even, you see, Queen Deuce, he went all in, didn't even want to waste time. <laughs> Somehow he won. My God, he made a straight. Did you see that? He probably made a straight. Queen Deuce, they just go all in with anything. So push four charts, I used to play sit and goes, or even final table with, of a tournament when you're low stack, or even some doesn't have to be final table. You may be 50 players left, but you're low stack. That's when you want to start using push forward charts, but you have to study them. So these guys are done. Let's see, that was a $3 buy-in and 30 cents uh, fee. So first place is 30 and 50. He made $10, $10 and 20 cents in this. Now, how much can you make? playing sit and goes. Well, let's see. So the lowest uh, buying for sit and goes is $1.50 and actually it is $1.65 when you add the fee. First place is 50%, second place 30 and uh, third place 20%. We're gonna start playing 150. I created simple spreadsheet to show us if you play, let's say 10 of this in a day. You can make like two rounds of five each, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon, if you have time. If not, then you play, let's say, five at the most. So for playing two of them, it costs you three dollars. Playing three, four, fifty, playing four, and I suggest minimum four for the session, minimum four. It costs you six dollars. What can you win? Actually, it costs you six dollars plus, uh, plus fee which is 10%. So if you play uh, 10 of them, it costs you 16.50. If you play only five, it costs you $8. And that's what you're gonna lose, that same amount, if you don't win any. Let's see, let's say you take, uh, you, you lose the first one, take second place in uh, your second, take third place here, then you win one. Then you lose two of them, then you get second, then third, then third. And look at that. By the end of the day, you put in a game 1650, you won in prizes 2295, which gives you plus of 645. So you made ten dollars after three hours of play sit and goes. Maybe you become more skillful, so you add another win here and you convert this to a win, not the third place. Now we're talking about doubling up. Well, winning $17, be profit, making profit $17. It's nothing to brag about. But don't don't forget that you're playing only $1.50. So what's your ROI or uh, return on investment is a formula that tells you how you doing in your uh, poker tournaments. It doesn't apply to cash games at all. Formula is profit divided uh, with investment and multiplied by 100. And that's the percentage. So for this day, 
your return on investment is 100%, which means that you doubled up your money. You paid $16.50 to play, you cashed out 33 your profit is a little bit higher for that 4.5%. But basically, 100% means you doubled up your money. Well, but everybody wants to make a big bucks, but it doesn't work like that. It's in so slow steps. Once you start playing, let's say, for $3. Now, playing 10 tournaments, you make $34 a day. How are you going to make real money there? Well, what's your average here? I have it uh, three bust outs, three first places, couple second and couple third. Well, how about if you start playing better, start cashing more? Look at this. Just playing $3 sit and goes successfully, you have two and a half times your money. Well, do that uh, on weekends, just once on Saturday and Sunday. That is eight times a month. That is $400 for clicking on uh, your laptop. I think that's good. Go to $5 tournaments. $5 tournaments, they're still donkeys. They're still donkeys. You can make $84 with this. I just don't know how accurate is this that I uh, put here. We can use some other examples like... Uh, you win first one, you get second, you got unlucky, you don't get nothing here, you got second, first, first, because you're really good now, first, second, uh, third, and nothing. Make $84. Make this one more first place, you make $100 a day. Maybe 10 tournaments in a row is uh, too much for you, so you're going to play only 5 tournaments. Still, you're going to make $50 a, month, a day. You go to higher level, ten dollar tournaments. Well, tougher players. So let's say you have third place here. Still, sixty dollars. It depends on uh, how many of this you can win. Can you do this? Can you put the time and effort? Do you have a patience? Let me know if you start. Here is also one more website, and I'm gonna post the link below in a description. You can look at this, it will explain in writing and much better words, same thing what I told you. What's the push fold strategy? This is all about maximizing fold equity. When blinds and antis are a big portion of your stack, you got to do all you can to collect them. That's what I already said. It's about uh, getting blinds and anti, not necessarily winning the uh, in showdown. Pushing all in maximizes your fold equity. Read this. And if you didn't till now, Google it. Look, search for a sit and go strategy. This is skill completely different of what you learned in a cash game. Be smart and make some money. So I hope I showed for those that are afraid to play multiple tables because they think they have to commit to each hand on each table and then there's not enough time. No, like I said, first five levels, you really play rarely. I fold personally everything, including ace jack. I don't even want to see the flop with ace jack. That's not a hand, it's just a trouble. So you can play multiple tables, including even cash games. Again, you don't commit to every hand. You play just the best hands. So to review the system, rule number one, play sit and goes. Don't waste time on micro cash games. Rule number two, play multiple tables, minimum four. If you make money in one of them, it will pay for all four. Rule number three, understand the timing. You have enough time to play three or four tables at once. Open tables, in 20 minutes sequence when the table reaches the critical point when the blinds are over 100 you can pay attention to it first table will be winding down maybe your head heads up 20 another 20 minutes you open a third table third table you even don't have to pay attention in first 20 minutes at all you are finishing first table when you are maybe heads up and occasionally 
click all in on second table because second table right now is the big blind is under 50. So that is timing I was talking about and the whole system is based by in that. Study the charts without studying, which is rule number four, you cannot have a success. Push fold is the system that you play once the blinds are over 100. There's no modifications there. It's push or fall, no limp. If somebody raises before you, it's still push or fall. But for calling a raise, you don't play hands from the chart. You play just top maybe 5% range. I wish that this, this can help you. I really wish that and hope that maybe a month from now I hear some of you having luck in making money playing sea tangles. Adios and good luck to all of you.